y'all went off on me from my last Starfield video. I was just trying to get my first impressions of the game before I got my hands on it, and y'all tore me up, and rightfully so. But what if I told you that was all intentional? No, 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 I was completely wrong. It seems like people really like it. But there's much more to this game than just a few similarities between it and a handful of games. Yes, there's a bigger player in all of this, and I can tell you right now, it's not Bethesda. Okay, I may be in serious trouble for coming out with all of this information. It's very sensitive and possibly criminal, but I feel like it's my civic duty to expose this game for the diabolical scheme it's been shrouding since its inception. I believe it was all part of a bigger plan and was completely intentional to make such a controversial game. The whole thesis of this was to push the real puppeteer deep, deep into the shadows. As all the inflammatory press in the months leading up to its release was the main focus, it really just drove the truth further into irrelevancy. I, unfortunately, was one of the people pushing back, and I'll admit, I was tricked, just like everyone else. Let's go back to the very start of this whole story, all the way back to the announcement of Bethesda's latest IP. June 10th, 2018, Todd Howard takes the stage at around 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with his biggest reveal since Skyrim, a little game by the name Starfield. Boom goes the dynamite. The crowd went mild to say the least. And better yet, this snarky motherfucker had the audacity to also hint at all the progression being made on Elder Scrolls 6 to a far bigger audience reaction. All to say that it wasn't done yet. And honestly, we've just been waiting for far, far too long. Unfortunately, as we know, Starfield went on to be the first of these two games to be placed in the player's hands, with an original release date slated for November of 2022. Now, this obviously got pushed back by almost a whole nother year, but why? What happened with Bethesda in the years between the announcement of Starfield and now? And why choose to prioritize it over the guaranteed success of Elder Scrolls VI? Uh... Okay, from this point on, I'm going into a bit of speculation territory, and if I'm going to be honest, this isn't really that serious of a video anyway. Or is it? September 21st, 2020, Microsoft makes a massive investing move and strikes a $7.5 billion acquisition of ZeniMax Media. ZeniMax is a huge holding company that serves as a parent company to around eight other smaller companies. The most notably among them, Bethesda Softworks. Now, this acquisition is fairly innocuous in how large corporations typically buy out other companies to try and monopolize an industry. It's a harmless fact, but it's an important factor when dissecting the larger conspiracy. Let's fast forward to less than a month later. Microsoft drops their highly anticipated next-gen console, the Series X. There was a ton of hype surrounding this next generation of gaming consoles, and it was even further perpetuated with Sony just two days after Microsoft releasing their next generation, the PS5. With this, the next era of console wars began. Neither company was able to sustain the demand of these consoles, with many factors stacking up against them. From chip shortages caused by COVID or crypto mining, to scalpers buying up the current stock just to hike up the price and resell them. Neither company was able to keep up with this unprecedented demand. In all honesty, this worked out for both companies, because even though they couldn't keep up, they were still able to completely sell out of everything they had at launch, making tons of money in the process. And from then on, were able to easily just pass the blame to supply chain issues. But fortunately, now, in 2023, the demand has stabilized and everyone who wants a next-gen console likely can easily just find one on the shelves at their local Walmart or Best Buy. But what the hell am I even bringing all this shit up for anyway? I thought this video was supposed to be about Starfield. Why am I bringing up all this seemingly irrelevant shit? Well, because it has everything to do with Starfield. You see, as this next generation released and the years went by, Sony seemed to be blowing Microsoft out of the water in sales. And this started to worry Microsoft. If we take a look back in time, we can see that year after year, Microsoft had come up just short against Sony in sales of consoles generation to generation. The one time they did end up beating Sony was in the era of the almighty Xbox 360. Now, I want you to close your eyes. What's the first game that comes to mind when you think back on the Xbox 360? That's right, Halo 3. Halo 3 was a smash hit phenomenon. It ushered in a whole new era for Microsoft, 
and forced an explosion in sales for the only console it was playable on. Everyone was playing this game and there was no doubt it was driving up sales of the Xbox 360. Okay, now I feel that with all this setup, there's substantial evidence already to finally make the claim that I've been holding out mentioning because it's so incredibly unfounded and truthfully unbelievable. But Starfield was released solely to drive up the sales of the Series X. Whoa, 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 chill out. This is partially a joke, but hear me out. All conspiracies sound ridiculous at first. All right, reviewing the timeline. The Series X comes out November 2020, the PS5 comes out two days later. The console wars begin and Sony is taking the dub month after month. This is looking like the third out of four years Sony has held higher sales than Microsoft since the PS2 and the original Xbox. The one year they were able to outperform Sony was the same year they had a huge game that no doubt brought many sales to Microsoft. The Xbox is doing more than fine in sales, there's no question about that. But obviously they wanna be the leader, right? That's what most businesses want, to be the best. So they spend a cool 7.5 billy to acquire a major gaming conglomerate that has already announced two games that are sure to generate tons of hype and attention. What an interesting play. Now we're in the present day. Bethesda is owned by Papa Gates, and everyone is eagerly waiting for the release of Elder Scrolls 6. Let's be real. But curiously, they instead choose to announce Starfield as their next game to come out. Thus begin the rumblings of the shitstorm headed for the gaming media. As anticipated, there was a huge divide in the reactions of Starfield. Half the community is upset at a seemingly rehashed game that doesn't look like it had 8 years of development into it. And the other half are ride or dying for Bethesda and don't care what it looks like as long as it's fun. And I think both are very valid arguments, which is why I think this is getting so much attention. This is exactly what Microsoft and Bethesda wanted. This was the plan all along. So a lot about what I'm about to say is kind of based on my personal experience with the game, but I'm certainly not the only one with this initial impression. I wasn't in a rush to play Starfield, so I waited for its official launch date to attempt to play it. I have an outdated Xbox One X, and that thing is definitely not gonna be running Starfield anytime soon. Hell, that dinosaur could barely manage Cyberpunk three years ago. Ain't no way I'm even attempting it. Instead, I decided to download it to my computer via the Xbox Game Pass app, which is notorious for bottlenecking the hell out of your PC when you're trying to play games off of it. It's horrible. I mean, I can barely play older games like State of Decay 2 without constant stuttering, even on the lowest settings. And I don't remember this always being the case. That's suspicious. So with an outdated console and a bare minimum capable PC, I attempted to boot up Starfield and... I believe we are no longer alone. The enemy has vacated this location. Never have I seen a game perform so poorly, and apparently it's been optimized. And surprisingly, the response thus far from Todd has been, if it doesn't run well, then upgrade your PC, Brokey. Uh, we did. It's running great. It is a next-gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game. No, but seriously, as someone in my position, I really wanted and attempted to give Starfield a chance, but wasn't really able to play it. And if I ever wanted a chance to enjoy the latest Bethesda masterpiece, I'd need to do one of two things. Upgrade my PC or buy an Xbox Series X. And you could probably guess which one's going to be cheaper. Well, I could probably just buy it on Steam and it would run much better than Game Pass, but <clears throat> no, I'm not really invested that much. So yeah, this is the only conclusion I could come to when exploring that absolutely absurd nature of Starfield. What led up to its release, and why Microsoft bought ZeniMax, and why Starfield was chosen first over Elder Scrolls 6. It's beginning to make so much sense now. It was all a conspiracy to drum up the console wars yet again, and bring more people to fund Microsoft's future endeavors. 
One of the biggest arguments I've seen so far from Bethesda Sims has been, oh, it's just the Sony Pony Boys hating because they can't play it. But really, that's not it at all. It, it was definitely the deep state of Microsoft, carefully calculating and planning their takeover as leader of the latest console generation. Or it was just a bad game. Uh, okay, 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 before y'all get so angry and rush to the comments to give me actual facts, I'm really not interested in hearing them. This was 100% a joke, and I don't actually believe any of this. I'm just upset my computer can't run it properly, and wanted to somehow still make videos on it. I'm sorry if I raised some of your blood pressure, but seriously, I thank y'all for watching, and, and I'll see y'all next time. The biggest leak in Xbox history just happened. Here's what these confidential documents revealed. The Elder Scrolls 6 will be an Xbox exclusive. Sorry, PlayStation fans. Fallout 3 and The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion are getting remastered. And Red Dead Redemption 2 might get a next-gen update. Xbox head Phil Spencer really wants Microsoft to buy Nintendo. Mamma Mia! After Sony's 2020 PS5 reveal, Phil Spencer said he believed Microsoft had a better product than Sony had.